Um, talk about the business side. Talk about, I mean, you, you have a, a lot of hands here and there, pretty high level, your presence and everything. Talk about how you were able to do that full time, make this a full time gig. Can you, you know, I know it's, it's, a, a, it's probably more than you know, the time we had a lot. I but but I, yeah, but I, I want you to hit that part. Okay, so how many of you want to make money DJing? Awesome. All right, cool. So we're all in the same boat here. So um, I was listening to a podcast on the way down here, and they broke it down like really easily. So um, first is relationships. Zan, how many times has someone booked you without even hearing you DJ? Lots, actually. Right? It's because um, because you're a nice person. Because you have a great. You have great branding. Uh, people know you and they've been to your set and they talk about you. All, all the, the veteran DJs in here have probably earned gigs without ever having, having someone heard them spin. So, um, I mean, obviously, number one, be a good person because being a good person is the right thing to do. But it will also help you in your business. Um, you want to let a lot of people know that you are a DJ. Queen Celine's got it with her, with her laptop stand. Anytime she's at the library, she's somewhere else, she flips that open and people go, oh, she's a DJ. I need a DJ for something, I'm gonna go talk to her, maybe I'm gonna go to the car, whatever. So um, when someone asks you, hey, how are you doing? It's really easy to say, I'm good, how are you? Uh, it's better to say something like, oh, I'm really good, I just had a gig last week, um, the crowd was really fun. And then a gig, what are you doing now? You playing instruments? No, I'm a DJ. And then boom, oh, my friend needs to cut, my, my, my friend's having a wedding, my friend's having this, uh, we're trying to go out on Friday night, where are you spinning? Like, you want to start that conversation and talk about you being a DJ from the jump. Um, so again, relationships is number one. Um, once you have the relationships part of it down, you want to get on with the branding. Having a, a solid DJ name that me maybe means something to you, or um, maybe means nothing, but you're going to develop some kind of uh, aura about you. So um, for some people, it's, you know, this DJ, Anytime this person DJs, it's a party. You know, people are getting crazy, it's wild. Um, that might be their brand. It's like, oh, this DJ, they play everything. Okay, this DJ, best hip hop DJ in the city. This DJ, best house DJ in the city. Whatever it is. Um, you know, maybe it's this person wins all the battles, whatever it is. Um, you wanna think, you wanna associate something when someone says your DJ name, and it can be anything, whatever you want it to be, they wanna associate that with whatever you're trying to put out there. So that's the second part. So you're gonna build the relationship, people are gonna be talking about you, they might get your card, they might go to your website, they might go to your social media, probably more likely nowadays, and they wanna see a nice logo, they wanna see pictures of you DJ, they might wanna see a couple personal pictures to see, okay, this is a real person, and then they said, man, this person's really professional, and they, again, they haven't even heard you spin yet, but you can earn gigs through your relationships and then your branding. And then the last piece, unfortunately, in my opinion, is the skills part of it. So now that you've made the connection, they've looked up your social media, maybe they've talked about you know, um, the scheduling, the price point, uh, what to expect, what requirements you have. I need a six foot table, I need a tablecloth, I need two power outlets, and I need a 10 by 10 area of space um, and, a, uh, and something else. Uh, you've done all that, you show up, now you better have the skills. You guys are all practicing, I hear it like when I get here. So now you wanna you know, rock the party, make people dance, impress people with your skills, do whatever it takes to make sure that those people have a great time, especially the people that are writing the check. And um, that's where the skills come in, you do your thing. Honestly, it's, it should be the hardest part, but that's the easiest part. A lot of DJs have the skills. Um, but they can't do the first two things. I'll take a DJ that goes out uh, often to hear other DJs spin, that's listening to their radio, that's uh, introducing themselves to people. I'll take that DJ over a DJ that's sitting in their room by themselves for hours and hours and hours just practicing the same cuts or different cuts, or maybe they just do Instagram battle videos. I'll take this DJ every time because they probably know what's hot out in the streets, in the club, at their events, um, you know, in the stadiums, whatever it is. So again, it's relationships, will get you the in, branding and your professionalism, will get you booked, 
and then your skills will get you booked again so you can do the process all over. You can create new relationships, you know, maybe you increase your branding. Um, I, you guys probably saw the video that I did. So I'm always with cameras now. Obviously, you guys, some people don't have access to cameras, but you know, someone probably has a phone. Um, you know, Zan, you, you, anytime Zan DJs, there's probably three or four girls who are tagging her in her in their posts, and she doesn't have to do anything. All she has to do is boom, share share the story, boom, mm -hmm. free content. So again, if you're doing a great job, then other people will do the content for you. Me, no one's following me around, so I gotta do my own stuff and and get the content, chop it up, and then do it that way, so that when um, someone goes to my website, they see a nice video, they see some nice pictures, they say, okay, this person's pretty professional. They really are passionate about what they do. I go in. I do the show, hopefully I do a nice job, pass out cards, um, and then answer the phone and we should be making money if we're doing all this things correct. Any more? I got a business. So, how long have you been DJing? 12 years. What did you do before that and what was the point, if you can remember, where you're like, all right, man, I think I really can like, change my path and career or whatever, mm -hmm. and, and, and how did you stick with that? Sure, so I was a, I was a banker for PNC. Um, I actually started DJing when I was in school. Someone saw me like break dancing. I'm terrible, but they saw me break dancing at a party, and they were like, "You should join our DJ company." Uh, DJ didn't show up one day, and I was like, "I like music," and I was terrible. I played basically every Justin Timberlake and Michael Jackson record yeah. back to back to back, and I was like, "Well, I'm not gonna be terrible again, so I'm gonna, you know, practice." Bought some Fisher Price gear, um, and. Like, I mean, very, very similar to what you guys have over here with the record box and the smaller controllers. Yeah. And just fell in love with it and then practice every day. And again, Start tell people that you're a DJ. Yeah. yeah, you got it. Yeah, just right. right back to the cycle. All right. Mm -hmm. but, 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 but when did you know that you could do it, make a living out of it? You know what I'm saying? How, sure. Like, how are you, I mean, because to me, you know, it is, is not something that you can reliably count on unless you're getting those gigs, you know what I'm saying? It seems like it, it could be ways and making sure you can pay the bills Absolutely. and all that stuff. And right. Like, you did like three gigs a week you're like, oh okay, maybe I might could mm -hmm. yeah, that, that hustle. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so I had an idea in my mind about what my goal was, you know, how much I wanted to have in savings. Uh, where I wanted to be. You guys can kind of tell that I have a gear addiction, so uh, working two jobs kind of helped with that. Um, and uh, so there was basically a point where the banking was getting in the way of me making money as a DJ. And if you guys know anything about banking, um, at the level that I was at, uh, the hourly rate for a banker is way lower than the hourly rate for a DJ. Um, depending on how much you factor in, you know, going through music, organizing music, and things like that. But if you're just talking about, you know, four hours um, at a club versus, you know, 40 hours during the week, you know, it, 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 it down the, how do I say this, the ratio is really different. Uh, you're gonna make more as a DJ per hour than you are as a banker, at least in my experience. Uh, so once the banking was getting in the way of, me DJing more, which is I'm, I'm more passionate about, that's more fun to me, uh, I made a conscious decision to say, okay, I'm almost to where I want it to be with my savings. If I have enough gigs booked out, I have enough people, clients, um, I would argue that having a single client, you know, providing your entire rent, you know, whatever you have, uh, all your bills, is probably not the best idea, but I have, you know, many different clients that I could rely on to give me work if I needed it, and made the conscious decision to uh, leave the bank, and worked out well for me, but it took a lot of planning, and it, it, I, was, I was a DJ for seven years, and I was doing both for five years uh, before I felt comfortable leaving my bank job.